All right, guys, today we're in part four of the bow build with my 2014 Elite Energy 35. Today we're gonna to be looking at, looking at how to tie a D-loop, a really simple step, but it is absolutely essential that all archers and bow hunters know how to do this. So let's dive right in and talk about it. All you need to tie your D-loop is some D-loop material. Today I'm actually using a large paracord, just so you guys can see the knot better. A knife, a lighter, needle nose pliers, and then a spare knock from the arrows that you will be shooting. Okay, so I cheated. I already have my D-loop on my Energy 35. I want to talk about some considerations that you need to make as you're tying your D-loop before we look at the process itself. So first of all, something that some people overlook but's critical is knock fit. That's why I want you guys to have a free knock from the arrows that you'll use. What you don't want is for your D-loop to pinch your knock and be really tight when the bow is at rest. Because what happens is, as you get to full draw and the string angle changes, it's already going to decrease, or sorry, increase some tension on your knock. So you wanna make sure that your knock can spin freely um, and move freely, have a little bit of wiggle room between um, your D-loop knots. So let's dive right in and look at how to tie the D-loop knots. So you can see my existing loop here, and as I mentioned, I'm actually gonna use a larger string. This is some bright paracord, just to make it a little bit easier to see the knots. So this, again, is bottom and top for my loop. I tend to buy, or to, excuse me, I tend to tie the bottom first. Again, always making sure you know exactly where this uh, knocking point needs to be, where your arrow needs to clip in. If you don't, be sure to check out part three of this series because that placement is critical. So you're gonna have your position marked and now we're gonna begin to tie. I'm gonna start on the near side of the string, come around the back, like so, and then over. So I started on the near, came around, and now I'm going to the far side of the string. Coming back to the near and through my loop. So once again, starting on the near side, back, around, going to the far side, and going through my loop. And then we just want to tighten this. So again, it's critical to have the ends of your loop. You can see my real loop and then our fake loop here. To have those melted with a nice um, bead, basically. Uh, the material melts quite well and then you want to flatten it and have a nice bead to hold things through. So there's our bottom loop. If you know the placement um, that you need this loop for sure, and you should, then I like to take an extra step here and go ahead and tighten this down real tight. So what I'll do is take some needle nose pliers, um, wrap it up, and go ahead and pull nice and tight, cinching that bottom knot in place. I'm not gonna do it fully for our fake loop, which I'm obviously gonna cut off my bow. Okay. So there we go, there's our bottom knot. Now we wanna replicate this top knot. So we came out, the main loop piece of our string, we came out on the near side of our bow string. So we want to go to the far side of our bow string. We always want the loop material to be on opposite ends. One's near, one's far, okay? So let's put it right here again, I'm not gonna get the length perfect, but we came back the far end. We're going to go back through, all the way through, around to the front. So it's always back, front, near, far. Pull this guy through, cinch it together, and there you see. Okay, so that's how easy it is. Start on one side, being the near side, come around, back to the far side, loop through the D-loop, coming around to the opposite side of the string, and then through the hole. So you can see, even on my test here, I have a lot of extra material. You will get some guys recommending that you start um, tying your D-loop with a specific length of material, and guys will say, you know, oh, four and a half inches is how much material you need and that's the size that your D-loop needs to be. 
everyone's dupe can be different sizes. It's perfectly fine. What you need to do is determine where your anchor point is going to be with your release and then um, what size your G-loop needs to be accordingly. And so it's a little bit of, you know, trial and error. It's testing. And that's one reason that you need to be able to know how to tie a D-loop is because you may tie one and find that it's too short uh, or that it's too long and so you can tie another. So what we'd want to do with our extra material at this point is obviously cut it off. It's okay to leave a little bit of extra. Of course, we're near our string, so we want to be very careful as we're cutting near our bowstring. And then you can see, even with this paracord material, which isn't quite the same as our dilute material, but what we want to do is take the ends, um, even again with the real dilute material, take the ends and fray that out. And then what you would want to do is take your lighter and melt it. It's going to be really tough to do on this very windy day. But you would melt it. Um, it's going to begin to melt, form a nice bead, and then I take my lighter and flatten it down, which gives us that nice, that nice flat, um, solid knot to work with. So once you have your D-loop tied like this, keep in mind that it is going to stretch quite a bit, even when it's tied. When you put pressure on it, when you're pulling your bow back with your release, this loop is going to stretch. One thing I do to simulate that is, again, take some needle nose, and just begin to stretch it through. So keep that in mind as you're tying it. If it if you want it to be about this length and you tie it and it is that length, it's going to end up being too long by the time it stretches. So you really want to tie it somewhat shorter than what it looks like because it is going to stretch, 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 stretch. And you can now see that this loop has grown quite a bit and it actually has more stretch in it. And there you have it. So that is the basic D-loop knot. Again, make sure you have enough knock room, knock clearance, knock spacing, and um, that's it. Let me know if you have any questions.